Welcome to our All Souls service. Um, this service is happening on the 2nd of November. Um, unfortunately there was a technical mishap on the 1st of November and when the service took place. So instead we're having it on proper All Souls time. 2nd of November is actually the day of All Souls. This service is, is going out onto YouTube um, and we pray that it um, is an opportunity for you to, um, to be part of this service, albeit at a distance. This evening we have come together to remember before God our loved ones, to give thanks for their lives and to comfort one another in our grief. Let us pray. God, our refuge and strength, close at hand in our distress, meet us in our sorrow and lift our eyes to the peace and light of your constant care. Help us to hear your word of grace, that our fears will be dispelled by your love our loneliness eased by your presence, and our hope renewed by your promises. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll now have our first reading, Parable on Immortality, which has a place close to my heart, as it was read at my mother's funeral uh, two years and one month. I am standing upon the seashore. A ship at my side spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength. I stand and watch until at last she hangs like a speck of white cloud just where the sea and the sky come down to mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there she goes. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large in mast and hull and spar as she was when she left my side, and just as able to bear her load of living freight to the place of destination. Her diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at the moment, when someone at my side says, there she goes, there are other eyes watching her coming, and other voices ready to take up the glad shout, here she comes. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, grant us with all the faithful departed the sure benefits of your Son's saving passion and glorious resurrection, that in the last day, when you gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading is a regular one for funerals, John chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, 
We do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. When I was a child, we used to go on holiday regularly to the same cottage and the, there became a tradition that when we got close to the cottage, my father would drop us off at the supermarket and then go ahead and light the fire, put on the lights, put on the, um, the oven if necessary, get everything ready. Um, while we went and did the shopping for that evening's meal. He would then come and collect us from the supermarket and take us to the cottage. Every time there was that wonderful moment when we walked through the door and the fire was burning, the lights were on, everything was comfortable and comforting and ready. The passage that I just read speaks of Jesus going ahead of us to prepare a place and then coming back to take us to that place. Jesus is speaking just before his death to his followers and he wants to assure them of the future, that there is a heaven, that he is going to prepare place for them in that place where there will be no more weeping, no more pain, no more hurt, no more sadness. And that when they arrive, it will be like that rented cottage, warm, light, welcoming. In a short while, I'm going to light the Paschal candle at the head of the, the cross of candles. That symbol of a simple light lit in the darkness speaks so powerfully of so many different things. It speaks of Christ leading us from grief into the light of heaven. It speaks to us of Jesus walking beside us, the light of the world, shining for our hearts. And it speaks of him preparing that place, a place of sanctuary and comfort and light. Each year we have this ceremony and each time I am astounded at the power that a simple candle can have, speaking to our hearts of a sense of calm and assurance in a troubled world. This year has been a very troubled year and now more than ever we need to hear those words of comfort that Jesus has for us. That he will never forsake us or leave us. That we are his and he will always care for us in our darkest times. And so I will light that paschal candle, a symbol of unending light, of comfort, of assurance.
we light this candle to remind us that when God the Father raised Jesus from the dead, he defeated the power of death, and his light shines in the midst of the darkness of this world. There will now be a series of the, the names of loved ones that have been requested to be placed on the, the PowerPoint and candles lit in their memory. And as the PowerPoint rolls round with those names, there will firstly be a song sung by Thorne Choir, God Be In My Head, which speaks of God being beside us at our start and our departing. And then Carol will come and read a poem, Remember, by Christina Rossetti. Remember. Remember me when I am gone away, gone far away into, into the silent land, where you can no more hold me by the hand, not I half turn to go, yet turning stay. Remember me when I no more, day by day, you tell me of our future that you planned. Only remember me. You understand it will be late to counsel, then or pray, as if you should forget me for a while, and afterwards remember me. Do not grieve. For if the darkness and corruption leave, 
a vestige of the thoughts that once I had, better by far you should forget and smile than that you should remember and be sad. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have defeated death and set your people free. You are the saviour of the world. Let us pray. The weight of grief may bear heavily upon us, but it is a load we need not bear alone. Let us now offer our burden to Jesus, Lord of life and death, Lord of the present and Lord of the future. We bring before you, Lord, our confusion in the face of shock, our despair in the face of tragedy, our helplessness in the face of death. Lift from us our burden, and in your power renew us. We say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Finish in blessing. Our Lord Jesus Christ is Lord of the living and of the dead. He is the light of the world who shines his light into our lives and guides us on our way. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and all you love now and forevermore. Amen.